Good morning, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to the St. Stephen's Baptist Church Virtual Worship. We're so glad that you are a part of the family. We're glad that you are here worshiping today. I thank God for the opportunity just to be able to praise Him on this Pentecost Sunday. Father, we pray for your children. We pray for this worship hour, God. This is the day, Lord, that the power of the Holy Spirit came upon all of your people. Now, oh God, I pray that the same would happen to every soul, wherever they're located. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just want to praise you forever.
This morning, I certainly will be coming from Psalms 24. Psalms 24. Yes, sir. The earth is Lord, and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the sea, and established it upon the flood. Mm -hmm. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Yeah. Or who shall stand in his holy place? Yes, sir. He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, yeah. nor scorned deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the generation of those that seek him, that seek thy faith, O Jacob. Lift up your head, or your gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, or your gates, and even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of Glory. Yes, the Lord of hosts, He is the King of Glory. Amen. Amen. I read Psalms 24, the word is not written. Amen. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to go to the throne of grace, yes, let us remove all things from our minds and our hearts and concentrate on Him yes, and on Him only. For he is our God. Let us pray. Father God, a group of your servants come this morning. Yeah. If for no other reason than to give you your glory, your honor, and to praise you. Yeah. Father, we say thank you. We say forgive us yeah. of our sin. For yeah. we have sinned yes. and have come short. But yet you still love us. So we say, forgive us, Father, and thank you for your grace and your mercy. For you certainly had mercy upon us. For we have done things that, Lord, that even man cannot forgive and won't forgive. But you being the true and living God, oh Father, we thank you. We thank you all for your son Jesus. For he came. And he set the tone for how we should live our life and how we should treat our neighbor. Yes. For your word said, love your neighbor as thyself. Yes. Father, we thank you. Right. We thank you, Jesus. Father, we also come at a time in this country that we must thank our government right. for the things for which are going on. And Father, we don't desire this to be a political right. thing, but we know the difference because you have given us a sense of right and wrong. Oh, yeah. yeah. And we're seeing so much wrong. And it's been heavy heart. Heavy heart. Yeah. When we think about what is happening, children, yeah. we think beyond that, Father, what has already happened because there will be no more Sunday again with these children. This is the beginning of summer. We know they were planning on going to SeaWorld and Fiesta, Texas and going out of town on vacation. And now parents have to bury their children. The same thing with your children.
will host a special job fair during the week of June 20th for young people ages 16 through 24. Most major companies in Bear County will be present and hiring on the spot. The jobs are part-time positions that extend beyond the summer and are pathways to permanent careers. St. Stephen's is one of 10 churches tasked with getting at least 50 applicants to the event. Pastor and Sister Biggs have the applications. Please get word to your loved ones, friends, and neighbors. Have them contact the church office at 210-226-3448 ASAP. We have a short window and a huge opportunity to bless the community. Food Pantry Update. Our trustee ministry is working hard to get our facility at 2014 East Carson ready for regularly scheduled food distributions similar to our pre-COVID ministry efforts. If anyone is interested in working with the food pantry, please contact the church office and leave your name and desire. It is a very crucial community service ministry that pleases God. Remembering loved ones. Over the past two and a half years, God has called home numerous church members and family members. We were not able to properly celebrate many of them. So on Sunday, June the 26th, we will have a special recognition morning worship to celebrate their lives. Around St. Stephen's. Tomorrow evening, our deacon ministry 
will meet at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom. Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., the Faith Work Study Group will look at the life of Barnabas as they continue to explore the subject, Understanding Spiritual Gifts. Wednesday at 10.30 a.m., the Bible Power Hour, fresh off a one-week break, will dive into Romans chapters 11 and 12. Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., our Bible Happy Hour unpacks a word to help you face current events from a biblical perspective. Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m., all church leaders will meet with Pastor Biggs via Zoom. Thank you, Music Ministry, for hosting an outstanding carnival for our graduates and youth. Spiritual PPE. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 2, 1 through 4a, New King James Version. These have been your announcements for the week. Let us govern ourselves accordingly.
But we shall not be defeated. We shall not be Because we serve an awesome God. We serve a God of Heavenly Father that will answer all prayers. He may not come when we want him, but he's always on time. He's always on time. We thank you for this pastor that you have stationed him. May you give him the wisdom and the courage and the strength to lead us where you would have us to go. We ask that you would bless this congregation as they come on this pain, amidst the, amidst the diseases, the fellowship in your name. So we, we ask that you bless each and every family. Father. We thank you for our children, Heavenly Father. May you bless them in a mighty way. And that you, that we would understand that when we were their ages, we did things that was not desirable in your sight. But yet, you blessed us. You took care of us. When we fell, you picked us up. Not, the, so, not because we were so good, Heavenly Father, but it was because those who had prayed for us, when we didn't or couldn't or wouldn't pray for ourselves, you took care of us, guided us, picked us up when we failed so many times. So we thank you. Now, Heavenly Father, as we continue this day, in the days that come, we will be in the Spirit. We will have struggling times with Heavenly Father. But we will be in the Spirit. But because we know, we know, Heavenly Father, as long as we are in the Spirit, you will not leave us. And you will take care of us. So we lean on the everlasting arm. We lean on you. And that's where we give up, get our peace in our hearts to move forward. Only in this spirit. And we ask this blessing. And all blessings in your holy son's name. Jesus. And let us all together. Amen.
Lord God, even now as we come before your throne, we pray this heart will be transformed in you. Simply to say thank you. Father, we thank you for quickening our spirit that you allowed us to see yet another day. And Father, we thank you that your spirit allowed us to gather together one more time. Father, we realize no had it not been, but only but by your grace and mercy, we would not see yet another beautiful day that you have established. So, Father, now, as we are here today, Father, I stand before you right now, Father, as a willing vessel. Father, I pray right now that you use me now as a vocal vessel, Father. I pray, Father, as the word goes forth, it goes forth with power, clarity, and understanding, that we may all become better stewards of the kingdom. Father, I pray for everyone that's here today. I pray that you sensitize their listening abilities, Father, so that they may receive your word. Even now, in the name of Jesus, Father, we lift up the pastor, even now, Father, we pray your spirit continue to uh, embed your, your, your healing power on him, Father, allow him to continue to lead us as you would guide him, in the name of Jesus, Father, and Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise and glory, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Give obedience to the Father, from whom all blessings flow, and to the Lord Jesus, to whom I proclaim everywhere that I go. The Bible reads, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. At this time, we want to give our pastor our, uh, the highest respect and honor. We thank him for allowing us to stand here yet again. We give honor and respect to Reverend Butler and Reverend Smith. We give honor and respect to all the deacons that are here. Amen. We give honor and respect to all the stewards that are here. Amen. We give honor and respect to everyone that is gathered in this house today. Amen. We love you with the love of Christ. Amen. And we thank you for being here. Amen. We're not going to hold you on, but we will move as the Holy Spirit moves on. Amen. If that's okay with yeah. you. Amen. If you would, please go with me in your Bibles to the book of 2 Thessalonians, if you will. All right. Pardon me, 1 Thessalonians, if you will. 1 Thessalonians. We're going to start in the fifth chapter, if you will. The fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. Amen. The fifth chapter of First Thessalonians. If it pleases everyone, I'd like for you to read along with me. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the seventeenth verse. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, and the seventeenth verse. If you have it, say amen. 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 It reads, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. That's all. I'd like to use for a thought. I'd like to solicit to you for your listening abilities. Prayer works. Prayer works. See, I wish I had a believer right then because we consider everything we've done. I, I just knew somebody kind of say a little something else, but now I, I, I'm saying so prayer works. I don't know about you, but I I know prayer works. Hallelujah. There's a there's a well known writer by the name of Stephen King. He wrote a book called The Storm of the Century. And in this book, it details unimaginable events that occurs when a certain stranger comes into town. And in these events, they vary from unusual and dangerous weather conditions to an untimely, unspeakable, violent death. And so finally, when the stranger comes face to face with the town's constable and the town's people, the stranger says to them, if you give me what I want, mm -hmm. I'll go away. Mm -hmm. And as the saying goes, you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Now this may, this particular story may seem a bit fictitious for some, and it does have a bit of contrast with some of the very same things that we on this side of heaven are going through. Mm -hmm. Some of the very same things that we are even witnessing in today. 
what we are experiencing could be our storm of the century. Mm -hmm. However, and for those of us who have citizenship in the kingdom, I'm talking about believers, yes, we yes, too yes. have a book. Amen, amen. Also known as the Bible. Yes, yes. Better known as the gospel. Yes, yes. And in the gospel according to 2 Timothy 3 and 1, it reads, This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Listen, if you will, if you have not been able to yet see signs of the perilous times oh, we're going through, all right. allow me to make just a few observations in the right. Fuel is hot. Mm. Food is hot. Come on. Rent is hot. Come on. Mortgages are hot. Yes. Cars are hot. Yes. Mental awareness is hot. Mm -hmm. Gun violence is hot. Yes. Student loans is hot. Yes. Tempers are hot. Yes. There's so much that's going on. Yes. Yes. So much that we are experiencing. And so it is without any question that our social and economic demands of goods are in high demand, and yet the supplies are low. And so likewise, to those of us as relates in the kingdom, when it comes to the urgency and the expectations of our needs needing to be met, our demands for social change is high. And our, uh, our patience for uh, political action is very low. So therefore, it's very uh, easy to su uh, suggest that for such a time as this, for such a time as today, if there's ever been a time in this day, in this earth, when we need to pray, the time is right now. The time is right now. There are a host of things that are going on right before our very eyes. And we need to understand that it's time to pray. That's very, very important because it seems like if you look around, Everybody's not praying. Mm -hmm. It seems like if you look around, somebody's waiting on the government to meet your needs. Somebody's waiting on somebody else to fulfill your needs. When the Lord has already allowed us to know that, He said, If my people who are called by my name shall honor themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then He will heal from heaven. Then He will forgive their sins and He'll heal the land. Hallelujah. I need you to pray with me just as we go along with this for a moment. If you do that, I'll, I believe the Holy Spirit will reveal some other things because there's some dynamics as we talk about prayer. Right. Hallelujah. If you wouldn't please, in the, this first letter of the epistles of Paul, uh, he wrote to the Thessalonians and he gives us distinct instructions to follow in verse 17. Just before as he begins to close up the book, if you will. He says, pray without ceasing. Yeah. Pray without ceasing. Right, now, because the first word prayer is capitalized, it suggests there's something significant. There is something hey. superimposing. There's something very profound. He says, pray without ceasing. So allow me, if you will, just for the sake of the moment, allow me to ask you a rhetorical question. Uh, what is prayer? What is prayer? Somebody may actually want to know what that is because I, I'm here to let you know because if I believe if all of us were to give us all the description of prayer, we would probably say most of the same thing, if you will. So if you would, please allow me just to share just a few things how the Holy Spirit looks at prayer. Number one, prayer is worship. Prayer is worship. Ladies and gentlemen, understand this prayer ain't nothing to play with, if you will. If you know to pray, you need to go ahead and pray. Because there are lives at stake. There are people that are relying on you. When they come to you and they say, pray for me, that's a moment that God appoints you to do something about that. So we need to understand prayer is worship, if you will. Prayer is faith-driven, a faith-driven, powerful form of communication in the spirit realm that enables believers to commune with the Father at all times. That's what it is. I know most of the time, the way we've all grown up, someone has said, say your prayers, especially when it comes time to eat our meals. God is good. God is good. Let him thank us for our food. Bow down heads, we must be fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. Amen. Well, it goes a little bit deeper than that. Just a little bit deeper. The Bible says, as we've already heard, God is a spirit, as it said. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What we're saying here, we got to 
to get away from people who keep saying you don't have to say a long prayer. We got to get away from that because what's happening, we are finding ourselves on this side of heaven. There's too much simplicity in the church today. There's too much, so much to get up and let's do this. God expects us to give him what's due. So when the Bible says to we must worship him in spirit and in truth, that's exactly what we need to do. And in fact, that's really the only way we can pray to him. Hallelujah. Another thing, understand, prayer was intended to be a dialogue platform. It was intended to be a dialogue platform. What are we saying? When both parties are actively engaged in communication, you know how uh, most of the time we've always heard someone to say, uh, uh, talk to the Lord about it. Uh, uh, let Lord, let the Lord lead you. Well, that's all well and fine, but understand, as you are talking to the Lord, he needs to hear from you too. It has to go both ways. It's not enough that you want to ask this and that, if you will. Sure, we know how some people, we've heard the word. Well, the word says you have not because you ask not. How do you know, well, if you're going to ask, you sometimes have to be patient enough to listen to. There's a little bit more that the Lord asks you for, but you're so quick to get up from your knees. You're so quick to stop doing some other things that you're going to go ahead and pray, and then you're going to walk away not knowing that there's something more. He expects that of us, if you will. Hallelujah. Listen, if you will. Prayer is a place, not a performance. Prayer is a place, not a performance. Listen, if you will, the Bible says in Psalms 91, he says, He that dwelleth in the secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We need to understand when you go into prayer, it's not just uh, it's not just putting your hands together. It's just not saying things by yourself or just saying things sometimes when you can hear yourself. There's something a little bit more significant when it comes to prayer, if you will. The Lord allows us to understand that when, when we pray, listen if you will, uh, it means much more. Uh, when we pray by faith, it gives us access and it allows us to be led by the Spirit into the spirit realm. Yes. It allows us to go into the spirit realm because, see, the Bible says that we should walk in the spirit so that we don't fulfill the things of the flesh. So, therefore, if we are in the spirit as we walk every day, as we do the things of our everyday lives, then it's very easy to go and engage in the spirit when we're talking to the Lord. The Holy Spirit leads us into the spirit realm. Why is that important? Because you must understand all of your blessings come from the spirit realm. Everything you need comes come from the spirit realm. Everything you ask for comes from the spirit realm. And everything you're going to get is going to come from the spirit realm. It has nothing to do with the college degree you have. It has nothing to do with the efforts you put in yourself. Every good blessing of the Bible and every good and perfect gift comes from above. So we need to understand what God is doing. He's saying when we go into prayer, listen, that's exactly what you're doing. Prayer is some place you need to go into, if you will. You remember the story, if you will. You remember the story about the lame man at the gate called Beautiful? And they, and they went there and they said how he was there for a long time. And so he was there because he couldn't go in. I'm trying to help somebody right here. Prayer allows you to know you need to go in. It's not so much just opening up your mouth, if you will. You need to go in. And you need to go in and with a mindset knowing, Lord, I'm coming into where you are. I'm coming into your realm. I'm getting out of this world and I'm coming into the spirit realm. Because we have enough stuff going on in the in the world, if you will, but we need to go where only the Lord is there. Let me tell you something else, if you will. When you go into where the Holy Spirit abides, you're not by yourself. If you will. You're not by yourself because in the Bible, Jesus is where two or more are gathered together in his name. He'll be right there in the midst with you. So you need to know you're never praying by yourself. You're never alone And every time you go into prayer. But that's important. I need you to get that. Why? Because there's another thing about when you're going in. Number one, it's a cohabitation. Do you know when you walk in the spirit, you walk not only by yourself, but you walk with the aid of the Holy Spirit. Everything you do, you are also under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Every time you talk to somebody, you're under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Every time you help somebody, you're under the unction of the Holy Spirit. So it's very easy to ascertain that when you go in, you're not alone. You are there. The Holy Spirit is there. The Lord Jesus is there. 
You are never alone in all you do. You are never alone in all the, in, uh, the things that you endure on this side of heaven. Yes. You are always with somebody else, and that somebody is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You remember that story, don't you, about the three who, uh, Hebrew men that were thrown into the fire yes. furnace? You know yes. that? And they were, what they were doing, they were still praying. And they were still giving God glory, if you will. And then, so it says that when they sent somebody to go see what's going on in there, he said, well, hey, you put three in there, but we look like it's got four in there. There's somebody that looks like Jesus up in there. What I'm trying to tell you, when you go into prayer, the Lord is right there waiting for you. You know, he's already waiting for a whole bunch of people who don't even say a thing when they come to the church. People don't even say a thing when they go to the, to the restaurant. I see it all the time. How can you go to the restaurant, sit down, and just because other people watch you, you don't want to send you grace, if you will. You don't want them to see that other side. Why? That's important as well, too. Prayer will make you vulnerable. Yes, it will. Prayer will make you vulnerable. Prayer will make you understand when the Bible says, when every knee shall bow and the tongue will confess the name of Jesus, if you will. Somebody don't want to be so vulnerable. How would it look if I'm all tough all the time, if I seem like I got, I got it together, and just that one day when I need to talk to Jesus, I just happen to break down on my knees. I can't afford that to happen. That's what somebody's probably saying. But do you know the, God, the Lord honors that if you will. He says to humble yourself before yeah. others. Yes Lord. That's what he wants us to know. And going in, listen, there's another thing. Every time you go in, if you will, something happens. Listen, if you will. The Bible reads, Matthew 6, it reads, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, Pray to the Father which, which is in secret, and the Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Good God, my listen, when you go in to the Father, he's already got something for you. When you go in to the Father, guess what? You're not supposed to be the same when you come out. Every time you go in to see the Father, he already knows what you have need of before you ask. He already knows what's been bothering you anyway. So before you even begin to ask, he's already blessed you with courage. He's already blessed you with peace. He's already blessed you with restoration. He just expects you to go in and get what's already waiting for you. together in my name. I'm there in the midst of them. That word together, it has a purposeful significance. It means communion. It means communion. The Greek transliterated word is koinonia. Koinonia, if you will. He wants us to have an intimate fellowship. He wants us to have an intimate relationship. He wants us to just take your time. He wants us to be there. You know, back in the day, I used to hear mom and her say, sometimes we got to steal away. You know, we got to do that sometimes. We, we have to cut all this stuff off, if you will. We got to cut off people that don't know Christ. We got to cut off people that don't want to be where you are. You know, we got to, we got to just steal away sometimes. Because we already see the evidence of what's going on in our lives today. Sometimes the, uh, our everyday life gets so hectic and so busy, if you will, we just need to go someplace and just have a talk with Jesus. You don't have to necessarily tell him all about your troubles. He knows what your troubles are. He just wants you to come to him, though. There is something inside of your spirit he needs to hear from you. Because see, I found out a long time ago, yeah, I can talk about my mama, I can talk about my daddy. These were praying people, if you will. But the Lord never heard from me. He never heard my praise. He never heard me testify. So sometimes when you're constantly going and asking someone else, pray for me. Well, that's all right, but you know what? God needs to hear from you too. He needs to hear your voice. He needs to hear what you have to say. Amen. Amen. 
the Bible reads Psalms 133. It says, uh, Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. The Bible also says uh, we should worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, mm -hmm. if you will. There's nothing more beautiful when the saints of God can come together. Yay. You know, we used to hear that back in the day. Uh, someone just said, when all God's children get together, yeah. what a time, what a time, what a time. That is so true even today. Yes, I love the fact that I'm in here with all of you. I've missed yeah. all of you. Yeah. I've missed every one of you. Yeah. There's something in your spirit just by being here. You now refreshing me. You better watch yourself because I might start shouting here. I ain't been around y'all in a while. And I'm loving it right now. Prayer is also a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. I know we've read the Bible. We've read and we've heard people talk about 2 Chronicles 20 and 15. Mm -hmm. And it does read where it says the battle is not yours. It is the Lord's. Yeah. And you know some people run away with that. Right. And that's all right. Mm -hmm. But I stop out and let you know something. Uh, the battle is the Lord's. Yeah. But the fight is yours. Yeah. The fight is yours. Yeah. Listen if you will. The, uh, uh, the, the fight if you will he's already equipped us if you read uh, Ephesians 6 through 11 yeah. and it's going to let you know listen if you will he gave you the helmet of salvation yeah. he gave you the press, the blessed plate of righteousness he gave you the shield of faith yeah. he gave yeah. you the sword of the spirit yeah. who going to fight your battle if he gave you all that to fight your battle he gave it all to you yes, sir. he allows you to know that what, everything you desire everything you need to live a life that pleases him he's already equipped you to do it yeah he's already equipped you to win if you will listen why is that important because in first peter 5 and 8 it reads be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil has a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may desire whom he may desire that's important now watch this because if it says whom he may, that means even the enemy had a decision to make. He can't get everybody that's around. Oh no, he know. he he knows when he approaching somebody that is believing. He knows I'm not going to waste my time. He already knows that. That's important for you know. Because listen, the enemy is looking for those who's not praying. The enemy is looking for people who don't believe. The enemy is looking for people who don't know where their help comes from. He's looking for those people. But praise be unto God. The Bible says in Luke 10 and 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power over the serpents, power over scorpions, and then it says, all power over the enemy. Yeah. All power over the enemy. And we got folk on this side crying. We got people on this side talking well, it's the devil, if you will. And the Lord's looking at you. I gave you what you need. Yeah. I gave you everything you need to defeat the enemy. In fact, the Bible says to uh, uh, to uh, uh, resist the devil, and he'll flee. I guarantee you, let the devil see you praising the Lord, even at your down this morning. Let the devil see you talking about, I ain't got no money to pay my bills, but I'm going to still praise Jesus. Let the devil see that. I guarantee you, he can't stay there. He cannot stay anywhere around you. That's what he says. Yeah. Here's another thing. Prayer mm -hmm. supports everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. I need you to get that. Because we have people on this side of heaven, they'll say, name it and claim it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Speak it into existence. Oh, say it's mine. Yeah. I'm here to let you know none of that will work <laughs> if you're not praying. <laughs> Prayer supports everything. Yeah. Prayer supports your healing. Mm -hmm. Prayer supports your deliverance. Yes. Prayer supports your peace. Yes. Prayer supports your blessings. Yes. Every and anything you require of the Lord, it takes prayer to get it going. Yes. Oh, it's yes. simple as that. Prayer is the absolute zenith of the access into the spirit realm. The absolute zenith. Prayer is the resource, the focal point, the benefactor, the avenue, the network, the answer, the key. The way, the truth, the life. No one comes into the Father but by prayer. It's, that's, that's it. 
And I realize I can say a host of things about prayer right about now that, that supports those things. You, and I'm sure most of you have already uh, experienced some things. I know he opened some doors for somebody. I, I know he delivered somebody. I know that, but, but, but here's something else. Uh, uh, so prayer supports your praise, too. Listen, if you will, every now and then when I see somebody praising the Lord, you know what? Uh, I don't even know your name. I don't even have to know where you live. But if you're praising the Lord, that's evidence to me that God has answered your prayer. That's enough for me to praise him right there. He's answered his prayer. Listen, if you will, Ecclesiastes 8, 4, it says, where the word of a king is, there's power. Lord Jesus, how many know there's power in prayer? Yeah. Oh, come on, there is power in prayer. Lord Jesus. Proverbs 29, 2 reads, where the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Hallelujah. The people rejoice. Prayer is the physical response to an answered prayer. Hey. Okay, I'm going to try it one more time uh, to, the, to the young people. We're going to hit the refresh button, okay? Prayer is the physical response to an answered prayer. Yeah. One more time. I think I'm going to reach out to the old physical. You know, like how we used to do an 8-track. You know, we used to uh, hit the rewind button on the 8-track back in the day. Prayer is the physical response to an answered prayer. Hey. Watch this. If you realize, you remember the story uh, in Luke uh, 17, and 17, 11 through 19. That's the story that talks about the 10 lepers, if you will. And you know how the story tells us that they were, uh, there were 10 that the Lord met in the village. And all of them needed the same thing. They all needed the healing from the Lord. So then the Bible tells us that uh, he healed all 10, so nine went away. They went away, but then there was just that one. That one, he didn't go that far. He had to stop where he was, and he had to give him praise. He said he had to give him glory. That's called prolific praise. That is prolific praise. And what that means, that means praise him like you already got it. Praise him like it's already done. Because he expects us to do that. He expects us to know that if you believe it's already done, he wants you to give him some praise. If you believe it's already finished, he wants you to give him some praise. Thank <laughs> you. 